Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Dave's faves. And today I want to talk to you about Berio's Sinfonia. Now, I've done a repertoire talk about Berio's Sinfonia, and it's come up in a couple of places because it is just one of the great avant-garde masterpieces of the 1960s. Really an extraordinary work. And I have to tell you how I first saw it because it really, it really was one of the great concerts of my life. It was phenomenal. It was a performance that began with La Mer, um, because there are quotations from La Mer in Berio's Sinfonia, and, and had a couple other things. I think it had, it was a DBC, and then the Sinfonia, and Berio himself conducted. It was at Yale, Yale University with the Yale Philharmonia, which was the, you know, the Yale School of Music official orchestra. And it was phenomenal. And it had the swingle singers. Well, let me explain to you what Sinfonia is. It's a five movement work, um, originally four movements, but eventually five, um, for a very large orchestra and with lots of percussion. And, you know, it's a modern, you know, avant garde thing. And eight singers, and specifically the swingle singers, who were known for doing vocal adaptations of classical pieces. You can still get some of their recordings. They were marvelous. They did like Mozart symphonies and Bach stuff and all st in, in vocal arrangements. And I loved the swingle singers. So I had all their records. So, so I went to see this thing, but I had no idea what Berio's Sinfonia was. I had no idea who Berio was. I was in high school. I, you know, I wasn't of driving age yet. I forget who took me. Um, I sat there all by myself. Oh, no, I didn't. I brought my brother. My brother was there with me. That's what happened. We both went. He, he, I managed to snooker him into coming. And, you know, La Mer was great, and he had a great time. And then the Berio Sinfonia came. And the Yale School of Music kids were there. And they had these scores that were like 10 feet tall and 20,000 pages, and we were sitting way, way, way up in the second balcony because it has the best sound in Woolsey Hall, which is just a fabulous hall. It really is a, acoustically an amazing hall. And, and these eight soloists came out with microphones, of course, and this huge orchestra gets going, and he gives a downbeat, and then all hell breaks loose. All kinds of stuff's going on. It's wild, absolutely wild. Um, there is a movement which is dedicated to Martin Luther King. There is a movement that has, you know, existentialist poetry and whatnot being spoken and read in 25 languages while the music's going. And it's a collage piece. And the centerpiece of the collage is the third movement, one of the great collage things ever assembled by the human mind. It consists of the entire scherzo of Mahler's Second Symphony, in, in and amongst which is superimposed um, virtually every piece of music known to mankind. I mean, dozens and dozens of quotations of, of everything conceivable. And through it all, the Mahler flows like an, like an underground river. Sometimes it emerges into the light. Sometimes it sinks back down. Sometimes it's sung. Sometimes it's played. There's this, there's this, um, I forget who wrote it, but there's this sort of tenor, tenor monologue going through the whole thing as well um, about poverty and injustice. And, you know, it's very 60s and very powerful and very moving. It's deeply moving. And no matter how distant and crazy and nutty it gets, the music is instantly gripping. It really is. And after that, there's a whispered interlude and a finale. Now, Berio recorded the Sinfonia himself, but only the four-movement version, which ended with that whispery little interlude. He later added a finale, which brings the work full circle, and I think it's, it's quite splendid that way. My favorite recording is right here. It's Ricardo Chailly with Electric Phoenix, a successor to the Swingle Singers um, and the Concertgebouw Orchestra. It's just gorgeous. It's fabulously recorded, and most importantly, it's very well balanced. Balance is a bitch in this piece. It really is because, because you've got to deal with, you know, getting the voices and the soloists against the ensemble. And there's so much happening at once that, you know, there's a tendency to want to focus on one thing. Like Boulez's recording focuses on that tenor in the Mahler movement. So you hear that his bit very clearly, 
but everything else gets sort of thrust into the background. And that's not right. It's like everything else. Bits should emerge and disappear, and you should always be straining a little bit to find meaning in the whole thing. And this is a performance that really lets you do it. It's magnificent. It's just fabulous. But there are a bunch of other good ones, too. I mean, there have been some fine recordings of this in recent years. Um, and you also get, let's see, the folk songs with Yark Van Ness, which are wonderful and quite popular. And Formazioni, another one of those texture, sound mass kind of pieces that, that Berio was doing um, so well, actually. He was a very, very interesting composer. And uh, I just adore this record. And I love the piece. It, it is such a profoundly moving, fascinating piece. And it's a classic because it is of its time just like a Beethoven symphony is of its time. It is both, you know, something that, that is rooted in a place and which transcends it. And that is what classical music is supposed to do. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care. <laughs>